It's time for the news review program. Do stay with us. You're watching the News Review on Press TV. Ten years have passed since an uprising roared into life in Bahrain against an undemocratic regime. People in the Persian Gulf Kingdom still hold rallies, those sporadic, to make their voices heard and to condemn the ruling Al Khalifa's crackdown on their popular movement. Bahraini people seem adamant in their pursuit of reform on the anniversary of the 2011 revolution. February 14, 2011 was the beginning of an uprising in Bahrain that brought tens of thousands of people to the streets across the tiny island to call for reform. But the peaceful movement soon turned bloody when the Al Khalifa dynasty began to quell demonstrations with an iron fist. Backed by forces deployed from Saudi Arabia in the early months of the uprising and mercenaries from other countries, the Bahraini regime launched a brutal clampdown. The heavy-handed response saw scores of people dead, thousands arrested, and many tortured in custody over years. <laughs> the unprecedented suppression drew international outcries, but those outcries failed to stop a kingdom that hosts the U.S. Navy's fifth fleet. The United States, of course, uh, wishes to keep that fifth fleet over there because as a result of the fifth fleet, it is able to uh, destabilize the region and terrorize people in the region. And so it serves America's interest to uh, uh, keep this regime in power uh, so that America's fifth fleet can uh, continue to operate from there. Emboldened by foreign support, the Manama regime dissolved the main opposition party, al Wafaq in 2016 and put its leaders behind bars. It also revoked the citizenship of Hain, including prominent cleric Sheikh Isa Qasim. From the Iranian city of Rome, the 84-year-old spiritual leader marked the uprising anniversary via televised address. With time, we can see that people have continued their uprising and they continue to achieve their aspirations and their demands, and they have great aspiration in order to reach their demands, no matter how long it would take. He said the uprising seeks to rectify the wrongdoings of the Al Khalifa regime. He noted that the Bahraini people want to take control of their own country. On the eve of the uprising anniversary, Bahrainis staged nation including in the capital Manama and renewed their call for the downfall of King Hamad and his monarchy. The demonstrators also demanded that all political prisoners be freed. Ten years after the first wave of demonstrations rocked Bahrain, people are still hoping that their resistance would bring about democratic reforms, progress on human rights, as well as accountability for past and present abuses. Okay, with that report, uh, let's now invite uh, one of our guests uh, to see what she thinks. Yazbek, uh, human rights activist, is joining us out of Melbourne. Good to have you with us on the show, lady. So uh, you just heard the report and uh, you saw the Bahraini people out there and this is while 10 years passed since uh, the uprising that they had in their country. S still they are there and they are trying to uh, cry out and to talk about their voices of dissent. So what is this indica indicative of? Um, good evening uh, in the first place. Uh, I want to, to congratulate the, the Bahraini people on their courage to keep uh, demanding their rightful demands for 10 years, to keep uh, speaking out and to keep uh, uh, calling out the government and to, to have their, their uh, legal rights. Uh, the, con the continuous uprising or the continuous demonstrations for 10 years now, today, uh, indicates how the will of the Bahraini people and indicates how uh, how much the government or um, Al Khalifa are 
oppressors and how much they want to control the country. Through the through these ten years, we've seen so much violations, we've seen so much oppression, but the people kept on demonstrating, kept on protesting, and kept on demanding their rights. And uh, as I said, that shows us how much they are uh, they are willing to change and how much they are uh, how much they were oppressed of that oppression now that they need to change uh, the current situation. Okay. Now from Beirut, we are also joined by another guest. We have uh, Gena Rabai, researcher with the Bahrain Forum for Human Rights. Uh, good to have you with us, uh, Gena. So how do you look at this? Uh, tell us what the, the Bahraini people want, what their demands are, and uh, the way that uh, Al Khalifa regime has treated them. Good afternoon to you and to your, you. all your viewers. Um, after 10 years since the beginning of the uprising in Bahrain and with the demonstrations and uh, different forms of protest still going on, in over 80 regions in Bahrain, whether cities, towns, villages, since the mass uh, protest in Al Manama anymore after the oppression in 2011, in spite of the authorities' suppressions on those protests, I would say a suitable title for, for this uprising would be Peaceful Demands, stressing on the word peaceful. For 10 years, the Bahraini people never backed up from demanding their rights, uh, but always maintained peacefulness in their methods. Uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, you ask me what, how the authorities react. On the mm -hmm. other hand, uh, what were the reactions of the authorities towards, towards those peaceful, peaceful protests? We can see that the authorities always reacted with oppression and violations of basic rights. There have been more than 15,000 prisoners of conscience, among whom there were uh, more than 1,500 minors and more than 200 women along the 10 years of the uprising. Those prisoners, faced severe torture in investigations and ill treatments in, in prisons and were arbitrary sentenced, mm -hmm. not to forget five executions that were carried out only for the crime of demanding rights. That's mm -hmm. what the people want, you ask me. The people want their rights, their basic rights, whether they're political representation and uh, yeah, just like be, to be like any citizens in the world. Right. Anyway, also over 12 1,200 carried out in areas and homes uh, uh, just in the past three years. All, the, of the, all of that oppression and the people still fully determined insist on the peacefulness uh, and the continuity of the protests, whether mm -hmm. the leadership of the, of, of the opposition in Bahrain, uh, uh, of the opposition movements in Bahrain, uh, as we heard yesterday in Sheikh Isa Qasim's speech, or the popular base. Right. Okay, let's go back to uh, Melbourne, uh, Fatima. You know that uh, the things that have been going on in Bahrain, they are not receiving much coverage by especially Western media. What could be the reason for this? Is Bahrain not part of the planet? Yeah, the first, the first is that the, is the oppression or the campaigns that the, the Bahraini authorities carried out on media and on journalists and on activists, like they shut down the only independent uh, newspaper in the country, Al Wasat, and uh, they closed all the all their offices. So there is no uh, no independent or no independent um, media outlet in the country to report on what's going in the country. But why is the Western media turning a blind eye towards what's happening in, in Bahrain. I believe it's uh, uh, like, uh, as we always say, that the Bahraini, the Bahraini authorities won't be able to continue their oppression without, uh, without having backing up from the government or their Western allies. Like the, uh, the United States, uh, uh, the United States, uh, the previous United States administration were encouraging the, the Bahraini government and the Saudi government as well to continue their oppression uh, to their people. Uh, after, after Trump's uh, last, uh, first and last visit to the Middle East, after he met uh, the, Bahra the, the officials in Saudi Arabia, we've seen that in the, in, the, uh, in the second day, the Bahraini government 
uh, targeted Sheikh Isa Ahmed Qasim and uh, revoked his citizenship, uh, obliged, forced him to to uh, to travel out of the country, and so on. So their their oppression and their violations and their targeting the people increased after after they got the green light from from Trump. So okay. without. Uh, Without the without the encouragement of the Western countries or Western governments, the Bahraini government won't be or the, or the Bahraini authorities won't be able to oppress their people that much. So um, of course, the the Western media won't be shedding the light on what's happening behind the behind the walls of Bahrain and behind the bars of the Bahraini prisons and behind the walls of the Bahraini um, courts. Okay. Uh, they won't shed the light on what the the authorities are doing to their people, how they are oppressing them, are are encouraging such an author uh, such an um, authority to do what they are doing. Okay. Now, one more quick question for uh, Ghana: uh, How, in what context, should we uh, consider the role of? Uh, let's say external powers when it comes to uh, developments in Bahrain. Let's say Saudi Arabia and the U.S., for instance. Unfortunately, it's, it seems like a fact, or it is a fact, that uh, political alliances that are based on economic benefits or so are way prior than, than alliances based on human rights. And those countries that are allies, that are allies to, the, uh, to the Bahraini government, uh, they have a blind eye on, their, on the, uh, the human rights situation in Bahrain. They, doesn't care, they don't care about it because they look for their political and economic benefits more. So, mm -hmm. to be honest, it doesn't seem realistic if we demanded much because uh, International organizations, human rights organizations, and local human rights organizations have been demanding for 10 years with no serious response. Okay. We do still demand, it's our duty, mm -hmm. but we do not expect, to be honest, we do not expect any response. Okay. Thank you very much for your contribution and comments. We had uh, Ganaro Bai, researcher with Bahrain Forum for Human Rights, who joined us from Beirut. And also Fatima Yazbek, human rights activist out of Melbourne. Thank you for watching.